Welcome to Art Confidential. Today, we're going to look at 10 paintings by Rembrandt Harmunzen van Ryan. This painting, The Night Watch, is without a doubt the magnum opus of Rembrandt van Ryan. It's an enormous painting that depicts a military group as they are about to embark on a mission. It uses a sense of influence by the paintings of Caravaggio, who developed this dramatic style in the early 17th century. The almost remarkable feature about this painting is that it invokes a perception of motion, something quite remarkable for this day and age. Although the painting is owned by the Amsterdam Museum, it's usually on display at the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. The Sea of Galilee. The storm on the Sea of Galilee is not only one of the most famous Rembrandt paintings, but also one of the most intriguing ones for several reasons. It's the artist's only seascape and depicts a story mentioned in the Gospel of Mark in which Jesus Christ calms the Sea of Galilee, which is a freshwater lake in modern day Israel. One of the men inside the boat looks directly at the viewer and this is a self-portrait of the artist. Another follower of Jesus can be seen throwing up with seasickness as he's hanging out the side of the boat. The painting is one of the 13 paintings that were stolen from the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston in 1990, and its whereabouts remain unknown until today. This is a self-portrait of Rembrandt, one of many. He holds his palette, his, his, sorry, his circles, concentric circles, have background influences. Certain artist critiques have tried to decipher the meaning behind the circles. Here we have the anatomy lesson painted in 1632. The anatomy lesson of Dr. Nicholas Tulp depicts the Dutch surgeon and the later mayor of Amsterdam. Mr. Tulp holding an anatomy lesson on the corpse of a criminal, Iris Kent. In 17th century Holland, there was one public anatomy per year that was performed on the body of an executed criminal. The painting provides movement unheard of in the day. When it was commissioned by the Amsterdam Guild of Surgeons for their boardroom, it can be seen today at the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. Our next painting, Esheba at her bath, depicts a story from the Old Testament in which King David sees Bathsheba bathing. He not only seduces and impregnates her shirt shortly afterwards, but also sends out her husband to battle without his general by his side, a virtual death sentence in that day. This particular story has been depicted multiple times by artists from a variety of art movements. Rembrandt's version focuses on a subtle sense of sensuality, which he achieves by contrasting the bright color of the shares of her body with the dark colors of her surroundings. It's part of the collection for the Louvre Museum in Paris. Danae, finished in 1636. It's only one of Rembrandt's best nude paintings, but one of the greatest masterpieces of the celebrated Dutch artist. Just like the painting's title suggests, it depicts Danae, the mother of the ancient Greek mythological hero Perseus. The life-size depiction of Danae is thought to show her welcoming Zeus, who came to her in the form of golden rain. In the 1770s, the paintings was bought by Catherine II of Russia and has been housed in the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg ever since. The last Rembrandt painting. This is a secular theme completed in 1662, depicts the leader of the Batavian Rebellion, Claudius Silius, and the Batavi chiefs promising to join the rebellion against the Roman Empire. The conspiracy of Claudius Sevillus was commissioned for the new town hall in Amsterdam, 
but it was soon returned to Rembrandt, who dramatically cut it down to one quarter of the original size and slightly modified it in order to make it easier to sell. In the 18th century, the painting was acquired by the Royal Swedish Academy of Arts that later deposited it in the National Museum in Stockholm. Syndicates of the Draper's Guild. This painting, completed in 1662, is a group portrait of the syndicates of the Amsterdam Draper's Guild, whose job was to evaluate the quality of fabric offered by weavers to the guild members. The exception is the man wearing cloth in the back, who is a servant. The painting was commissioned by the Amsterdam Draper's Guild for the guild hall that housed it until the early 1770s. Today, the sampling officials is among the greatest treasures of the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. The Return of the Prodigal Son is one of the last works of the celebrated Dutch painter and is believed to be completed shortly before his death. The life-size painting depicts the biblical story of the prodigal son at the moment he returns to his father, regretting his sins and begging for forgiveness. The painting depicts emotion within art at work. It is one of the highlights of the Hermitage Museum, Western European Art Collection, seen in St. Petersburg, Russia. The Jewish Bride. This painting by Rembrandt, painted in 1669, the painting gained its current name in the early 19th century when an Amsterdam art collector identified the subject as that of a Jewish father bestowing a necklace upon his daughter at her wedding. And so this is the last of the 10 chosen paintings I'm sharing with you today. And I hope you enjoy this video. Comments are always appreciated. Thank you for watching. I appreciate all your comments below.